Hi everybody, I'm Becky and I apologize for my voice. I'm going to attempt to make this video, but I have laryngitis. It's going to be a short and sharp one. If it's too unbearable to listen to, then um, yeah, don't worry about it. Maybe go back and watch one of the other videos. So I'm Becky, this is Spoonie Squared, and today I want to talk about creating new opportunities for work when you have autism. So this is something I've had to do recently. After I got my diagnosis, I took a look at my whole life and I realized that my current working situation wasn't really working for me. Um, that was largely because by getting the diagnosis and having the label, I was able to really be much more clear about what my needs are to myself and to other people. And I was able to see where situations weren't really working and where I wasn't meeting my own fundamental needs, let alone being able to thrive in my career. So I had to, I decided to step away from the startup that I was working with and that meant I then was like blank sheet of paper pretty much having to start again from scratch. What did I do in order to do that? Well, the first thing I did was get really, really clear with myself about those fundamental needs. So what is it that I require to just show up as myself and not kind of do what so often happens in employment, which is to sort of start in a good place and then just gradually spiral downwards and downwards, which is a repeated pattern for me. Um, having lots of burnouts then, feeling very small, feeling like I'm not able to showcase my strengths or help my employer or customer. So I, like I said, first of all, got really, really clear on those fundamental needs. That included money, how I wanted to spend my time, also like the amount of time that I can work. I know that I require some flexibility, but that I also require routine. And so trying to figure out all of those underpinning needs, and that will be different for all of us, but it will probably include your finances, um, geography, like where do you want to live, your anything to do with health, mental health that needs around that, anything to do with your identity. So that again could be your identity as an autistic person, could be anything else to do with your identity, being a woman, LGBTQI identity, um, race, like all of those different aspects, or whatever you consider to be your identity. <laughs> it doesn't have to be something that is a protected characteristic. So first of all, really getting to grips with all of that. What is your underpinning fundamental need? For me, the other thing that came into that was that I know that I am better when I am running businesses myself. And I recognize that if you're watching this, you might not be in a position where you even know that that's how you work better. At the end of the day, I'm probably a lot older than many people who are also trying to find their way in the workplace. Um, I might be a lot younger as well. Uh, and I do have 20 years of experience under my belt. So of course that's gonna be really helpful to me. But I have to listen and I have to look back and I have to reflect and I have to take that learning and still move forward with it. And so it's still the same, um, but I do appreciate that you may not be able to say, I want to work for somebody else or I want to run my own business or I'm even able to run my own business at this particular time. Now, when I say run my own business, actually that's not what I'm doing completely. And the other thing that I talk about a lot is the idea of the portfolio career. And this is something that you can actually establish at any stage in your life. And I really think it can work very, very well for neurodivergent people. So um, having a portfolio career means that you get, you have kind of different jobs, different roles, perhaps all around the same area of interest. Some of them might be employed and you might have a steady income. Others might allow you to fulfill other aspects of what you need. Um, maybe something creative, maybe something in business, for example. So having a portfolio can be really, really helpful and you can actually establish a portfolio career, portfolio career very, very early in your life. Um, 
often it's kind of something that is assumed to be something that is uh, people do once they're more experienced but you don't necessarily have to um, in fact many people are used to doing a version of this when you're young where you might be studying and you have a part-time job there you go that's like a little start of a portfolio for example so for me having my own business and or having a portfolio is a really important thing as well so I knew all of these things so then I had to get really clear about what are the core things I want to do in business? What is it that I want to bring to each of the people I'm working with, whether that's clients, whether that's an employer? And so that's the first thing I did. I sat down and I kind of brainstormed all the things I could potentially do. And then I was like, well, what things do I really want to do? Which skills do I want to bring to the party? So that's what I, that's what I did. And then um, after that, um, actually, I did one thing before that. Apologies, my laryngitis brain is a little slow. First thing I did was take a break. You need to be able to recover, to recoup, have a little bit of a rest. And I looked forward to see how much of a break I could take without starting to worry too much about money and generating new opportunities. And essentially that was about two weeks and then I also gave myself time where I was like, I might not be having like a full salary for a little while and how long can I keep going in order to do that? Again, I know that for some people that might not be possible. So you'll need to kind of keep things ticking away whilst doing the like exploration. So in terms of generating new opportunities, first thing I did was talk to people, talk to people who are really, really close to me. So not like getting out there and spreading this to every single Tom, Dick and Harry, just talking to the people who I know really, really well. That also helped me get more clarity about where my opportunities might be, where my strengths are. And it started to socialize the things I wanted to do with certain people. So that was incredibly helpful because those people then when they're talking to other people or when they spot an opportunity, they're gonna come back and tell me. But having said that, a lot of the opportunities that have come up have sort of come out of the blue. And I'm a scientist <laughs> um, at heart, I'm a very rational thinker. And yet I do like to think about working with the universe <laughs> as well. Um, actually, because I'm a scientist, I know that like energy and everything is interconnected. So by kind of starting to socialize with other people, but also just really putting my intentions kind of getting my intentions clear for myself. And what I started to notice was different people started to reach out to me and which is strange because I didn't announce that I'd even other than on social, like on some socials, <laughs> not on LinkedIn, I hadn't really even announced that I'd lost, left my startup. So I know that some people were probably picking up on it. And so I did speak about it on Instagram. Um, I've spoken about it on here as well, but I didn't, I haven't spoken about it on more professional channels like LinkedIn, partly because I haven't felt ready yet to sort of announce where's next. I'm, but what started to happen before I even did any of that, is that people started to come to me and, and just small things like, do you want to have a chat? Um, let's go for a coffee, uh, those kind of things. And so I started to say yes to those things. And of course that begins to, again, socialize a little bit more widely and get you more clear about what you want to do. So I'm now about two months later from when I first made the decision to move on from the startup to start generating new things. And um, because I'd been talking to people, they did things like send me job opportunities. So when they came up, I started applying for things. And again, these are sort of for me, what I need is part-time roles, more contractor roles, so sort of pitching for business. And um, so I started to do that. and. The dream one um, has come to, well, hasn't fully come to fruition. Um, I now know that I have an interview for absolute dream role. So that's really, really exciting. This would be a one day a week role to go alongside some of my other business stuff. 
coaching innovators, entrepreneurs, and that's just a dream. And then the other thing that happened was another accelerator that I used to work with, they reached out to me. And I think that's because somebody I know who I'd socialized this with had had a conversation that just said, Becky might be interested, Becky might be available for something. When that came up, I was like, sure, let's have a conversation. I'd created space to have these conversations. And already, I mean, I have an opportunity, it's a paid opportunity, it's a new client. Um, and I will be working on that this month. So things are starting to flow, starting to come in. The other thing that I did was to take the things I was already doing and kind of not be, it's very easy to like also be a bit snobby about what you might want to do or be very, very picky. And you have to respect your life needs right now. So I coach part-time at a gymnastics center. So I took on where I could some extra hours at the gymnastics center. One of my other friends knew I was kind of um, in this in between, didn't really know what was going on next. So I've, I've been doing a little bit of work for her, helping her out because she needed an extra pair of hands. I've been, and these are things that don't take up a lot of headspace. Um, they allow me to still have the headspace to focus on what's next. So those kind of opportunities are actually really, really valuable, even though you might be getting paid less than you're used to, or they might not be what you expect to do for the long term, although who knows, they might turn into long term opportunities as well. And then I started again, because I was socializing my ideas, to get other requests from people to do little bits and pieces. Um, so again, these aren't the kind of new grand jobs, but like getting new clients, getting new business clients. And this was coming from my really close circle of people actually, who before I left my startup were like, you're just busy all the time. We know you can't help us. We know you can't do anything. As soon as they realized I was creating this space and where I wanted to focus, they were like, well, I need you for this. Um, can you help me out? So. I've been able to pick up some clients in that way as well. All of this without going out there and doing like a big launch or a big um, announcement, like I said, on professional channels, the where I'm going next. Now I do intend to do that, and but it's been really, really helpful to have all these other bits and pieces going on because again, gives me more clarity. And it started to sort of rebuild my stamina, which we know, can be difficult is started to to sort of get that inertia moving and um, that's really excited me actually for what comes next and it's giving me more confidence to then be able to really package up my business make sure I know what the brand is like what it is that I'm offering who I'm offering it to and actually realizing that I don't need to do that launch until maybe even next year at this point because of the other things that are coming in and because of the extra work that I've taken on. I probably will do it before the end of the year, but we'll see what happens. Because I have to say all of these tactics have led to me now having an incredibly busy autumn coming up. So really from, I'm going on holiday next week and then after that I have, everything just starts again. Um, and so it's all sort of landed on my lap. And I think being able to, you could look at me and be like, oh, well, of course it has, you've got all this experience and you've done this, that and the other. And, um, but this still applies to all of us. And the timing might be different. The types of roles might be different. The business might be different. But by doing this, first of all, giving yourself a little break and then creating the space to really get clear on what you want and then being able to articulate that to some people, but not necessarily shout it out to everybody, to apply for a few different opportunities and get that ball rolling. That has really worked for me. And those steps, even though, like I said, it might be completely different types of business or whatever, can really work for you too. You just have to apply it to your particular circumstances. So, I'm gonna leave it there because my voice is holding up, but it may not hold up for much longer. And I also wanted to say that I am on holiday next week. Normally, my intention was to pre-record before I go away, schedule a video for next week. 
I may not be able to do that because of my throat and because of the fact that I haven't been able to do as much work so I've got lots of other catching up to do but um, I, if I don't do it um, this week I will attempt to do it when I am away and then um, we'll see how it goes because I don't think who knows what the Wi-Fi is going to be like when I'm away. So um, hopefully there'll be a video next week. If there's not, that's why. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Share this with people who need to share it. And please comment down below. Like, do any of these steps resonate with you? Is this something that you're going to try? And um, if you have any questions specifically about your circumstances, then let me know. I'd love to hear from you. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon. Bye.